So thank you, I, I will be quick, I'll be very quick. Um, it's almost like I've got it in conclusion because in some ways these are some of the things that I wanted to say towards the end of my presentation this earlier on today. One thing I would say though, that your point about networks is really key. Um, it's important for social gratification, we need to be connected, but also it's important obviously for knowledge sharing, for confidence and credibility. Um, and the best networks are also really fertile ground in terms of co-creation of new ideas for, for innovation ultimately, whether they're within a city or between cities. Um, having said that, there are lots of really bad networks as well. And the ones that are the most productive are the ones that blend those cultural elements um, that enable people to build personal relationships um, and enable people to feel there's an equivalence of influence rather than being people who lead and those that follow. Um, but yes, networks are key. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is just give some, just some kind of practical or, or, or really personal um, um, offerings to the debate. Because we can talk conceptually about what is creativity, um, we can talk about the language, all that kind of stuff. But um, actually, we also need to think about you know, what people do in this space. So I've got five different things that I thought I'd just throw into the conversation. Um, as a sort of aperitif uh, before uh, lunchtime. Um, one is, um, I'm fascinated by some of the new kind of bottom-up, uh, community-driven, um, almost businesses or organisations that have taken it upon themselves to uh, reinvigorate the creative life of a city. Uh, I think that it's obvious that in a city, nothing is permanent. Everything is in a process of change, of evolution, of, of transformation, however fast or slow that might be. In English, there's this phrase, meanwhile. I don't know if that translates into Portuguese at all. But it's that sort of thing you do between things or um, while things are changing. Um, and as an organization that I really like in the UK called Meanwhile Space and Meanwhile Connect, and, and they are enablers and support, and support um, community organizations in, and, and creative businesses, artists in different parts of the country to basically take over space that is, for one reason or another, not being productively used at that particular time. Uh, so we see this in lots of shops, we see it in old factories, we see it in churches where no one goes to church, all of these kinds of things. Um, and I, I like the phrase meanwhile because it doesn't say, it, it, there's nothing concrete about it. It's quite open in a way. And in some ways I think that that's a good attitude to have about our cities. Um, nothing is permanent. The airports are not going to be airports in the future. They're going to change their function at some point in some way. We don't know how and when. Um, so meanwhile is a good way to think of the city. It's a work in progress. Um, other phrases linked to this are things like pop-up. Um, I'm sure most of you know, you know about the whole kind of pop-up movement across um, the world, you know, where, again, there's that sense of the temporary, um, the things that can just sort of surprise you, can arrive quickly and disappear as quickly as they arrived. But meanwhile, for me, is, is, is a nice way, nice way of thinking of, of our city. How can we most productively use and engage the resources we have in our city for however long during the time that we're in that city? And it's also a means of engagement, a means of working with our communities to ask questions around, you know, what do we do about, let's say, the old high street in our towns and cities? Um, you know, with the internet, with the, um, with, with the uh, uh, crisis, uh, with the shift in the way that we consume, uh, there is a real challenge in terms of repurposing our old retail centres, our, our traditional city centre retail units. So can we be creative in reimagining how we use that and how we develop the same kind of density and animation that the retail used to give, but perhaps through other uses? So meanwhile, it's good. Second, my second favourite, is about what I call civic entrepreneurialism. This is where the city, the municipality, literally opens its doors, but also 
uh, metaphorically is much more open and collab collaborative and connected than it used to be. And there's lots of research and in interesting information around things like open data, open governance, open source approaches to problem solving in the city, which I won't go into. Just give one example of a city that I think has embraced this agenda and has done so in a way that links very much to its past is the city of Utrecht in the Netherlands. So it's a city that's very old. It's a city that has deep memory. Um, it's a city that this year is celebrating the Treaty of Utrecht, which notionally was the first ever um, treaty between countries that, um, that provided a solution to boundary disputes without the need to go to war. So it was the first kind of peace um, accord around boundaries. What that city, I think, is doing at the moment is finding ways to use that historical context and that, that culture of togetherness and accord to develop a really kind of open and generous and creative approach to city making and city planning. And the way I think they're doing that is that there's, there's a kind of attitude around game playing, around fun, and around surprise in a lot of what they're doing. Um, so whether it's in the public space, so this is the this slide, sorry, this slide um, is, uh, has been introduced to the public realm as part of the commute for people in Utrecht. So you can walk up and down the stairs or you can have fun and go down the slide as a way to get to the train station. Um, so there's this kind of civic creative creativity that's gone right through their planning process. It's also sitting through the university that has developed a creative entrepreneurial program focusing particularly on games. Not just the computer game sector, but games more generally. Looking at how we use gaming as a way of creatively attending to some of the challenges, but also the opportunities that we have in our cities to open up thinking in the city. So there's something called the Dutch Games Garden, which is one of the kind of key hubs for emergent games companies in the Netherlands. But they're also opening up that talent in terms of what I think is a wider process that's happening in society, which some people call it the gamification of society. And it's not about everyone sitting at home playing games and getting fat. It's about people actually using the game metaphor to creatively problem solve some of the challenges that we have in our cities. And I think that Utrecht as a whole, as a city, is almost trying to embrace gamification as a means of problem solving in the city overall. My third favorite um, is something called, uh, well, I've called it Creative Growth for theme, but the, 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 the model I'm really interested in is this um, shop come cafe, come business hub, come um, kind of agenda setting organization called Farm in East London where my office is. So very unsalubriously next to a charity shop and a nail bar. Um, farm shop is somewhere that grows its own food, but it does so through a convergence of, I guess, culture, ecology, and of course, science. So they have these um, tilapia fish in the tanks, which are creating excretia, which they're using to then recycle through to create the nutrients that the plants need. They call it aquaphonics, that's the technical term. And they're growing these plants, and then they're selling those in their sandwiches, in the salads, in the cafe as a social enterprise. They also have the chickens on the roof, and um, you know, they, and they, but they, they, they're, they're a kind of hub. They're a, they're a convener of dialogue about, about how we smartly grow our cities, how we bring people from different disciplines together, uh, how we reduce our ecological footprint, all of those things. They're fun, they're engaging, um, but there's a serious message which is around you know, local business development, about talent coming together on, uh, to, to create new senses of place, new agendas. And it's and it's a creative environment to come into. And of course, they also, you know, they have free Wi-Fi and it's a place you come and do your business and, 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 and connect in. Um, I guess the agenda there is that sectors historically sit, uh, away, sit alongside each other, don't necessarily connect. Um, you know, the, the agricultural sector increasingly became inflated as a sort of, a sort of big business sector. And obviously we're seeing, a, um, that, seeing that change in the way that people are talking about locally sourced um, food stuffs. We're talking about kind of the, the relationship between contemporary design and historic identity. And I think that this kind of thing comes together through real practical business models such as what's happening in farm in East London. Fourth is around overall movements that are perhaps are linked to the, to the city slow movement overall. You know, slow fashion is something that's gained increasing credibility uh, in 
in, in the world. And it's, it's, I think it's, what is probably a challenge is it's underlinked. It's not effectively linked yet to places, to local economies. Uh, but the agenda, of course, is around ensuring that fashion and the way you source your garments isn't actually exploiting people, um, or isn't also um, negatively exploiting the environment. Um, and obviously, fashion is an incredibly toxic um, uh, um, sector, uh, particularly if you're buying your fashion, if you're buying your clothes at extremely cheap prices. You know there's exploitation along the lines there. What I think is starting to happen is that we're starting to see rooted, locally rooted approaches to slow fashion, where uh, I guess as we saw early on with, with the example um, around um, the uh, Dolce and Gabbana, we're seeing the coming together of, uh, of proud local um, aesthetic and high-end quality um, uh, slow fashion movements. Um, in Guimarães last year, we had a fashion hub program where we put out an open call for emergent fashion talent, and um, with lots of people um, came together. And then what, and we chose six designers, and we worked with them with their collections. Um, and, but we also helped them to develop an overall kind of brand identity for locally sourced fashion talent from the north of Portugal, which we then took to London and, and other parts of Northern Europe. And the idea there was that you can be authentic and globally connected. You can be locally sourced without exploitation being necessary. So I think fashion is quite interesting as a fourth agenda. And fifth and finally is that although we're talking about slowness, and I think this comes back to your point about networks, is that we can accelerate the connections, the networks that we need to, to be more emphatically local and emphatically um, um, rooted and, 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 and local. Um, so there are lots and lots of events um, around the world that are trying to do this. Uh, I talked earlier about Utrecht and the gamification of the city. I think that there are lots of agendas, for example, around hacking this city, getting people from different disciplines to problem solve in terms of city making. There are lots of festivals of ideas all over the world now, bringing people from different disciplines together. There are networks of festivals of ideas. Um, and there are um, events like the, the Up, um, um, move, uh, sort of things like the Up movement, and, and looking again at how we use our creative disciplines as tools for and platforms for civic engagement. So they're not just about people from the creative industries or the arts talking to each other, but they're used as a way of mobilizing people from across different walks of life. And these can be really fast events. They can bring together people together very quickly in creative ways um, to ultimately talk about slowness, sustainability, um, equality, and, um, uh, and long-term development. And I think what this comes down to for me whether these five examples or ten examples or whatever, is that we need ultimately to have civic creativity. Um, and this is not just about municipalities and governance. This is about a holistic embrace with creativity across the city, um, a born out of equivalence and strong partnership where everyone, whether they're somebody living by themselves or somebody who's working in a university or somebody in the municipality, ultimately the mayor can feel part of. So thank you very much. That's, more, that's all from me. Ultimately. Okay.